I was just talking into this camera for 17 minutes and 22 seconds before I realized I didn't hit the record button. Yay me. All right, guys, with that out of the way, let's get into this. Today's video, it's our budget recovery video. You know, we just spent $1,500 on some consoles and video games from one buyer on Facebook Marketplace. He was wanting to move everything at once. That's why we got such a great deal on it. The guy knew what he had, knew the value on it, but he needed it gone for reasons I will not discuss on here. It's personal stuff. But uh, yeah, we got a great deal on this lot. So now it's the budget recovery time because I spent all my game budget on it. I have a separate game budget account that was sitting at around $1,600 at the time of this purchase. And I spent $1,500 on it. So we were left with 94 bucks in the account. So now I got to build my fund back up. Now, the whole reason I got this collection was because I saw in it there's stuff that I really needed for the collection and I knew there was stuff that I didn't need. So I'd be able to sell it off to make up for the cost that I paid on it. What are the things I needed? The four main things that I needed were some consoles that were in there. Stuff I never thought I'd even see and be able to touch in person, much less own. Uh, that being a TurboGrafx-16 with the CD attachment on it, a PlayStation 1 with the LCD screen, a Virtual Boy and a Sega Saturn. Those were the top four things I really wanted to keep for my collection because it's stuff that I really wanted or they meant something to me in the past that I wanted to get back in the collection. So those were the main goals. And there were some games you guys didn't even get to see. So that's some games I wanted to add to the collection that I did not have doubles of that I needed for my collection. So I guess you don't really need anything that I wanted for my collection. So anyways, without further ado, we're going to get into the stuff that has sold. And as of, I'm recording this a couple days later, but the, I picked all these items up on February 28th, took like two or three days to process it and go through everything, test things and clean things and get all the cords untangled. Cause I'll show a picture at the start of this while I'm talking about it, a picture of the bins. That's just full of cords and wires. It was a mess. So a lot of work went into getting this stuff ready. But as of March 10th was the last time I sold anything. So I didn't start listing things up maybe three days after I got it. So if in, this is like seven days worth of getting rid of stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff I did to make up that budget to try to get it back and go through some of the sales here. So it could be a little bit boring, but it's a little fun to see like what we accrued and what stuff sold for and to show you guys that you can still give people deals too and still kind of get money back from it you don't need to get top dollar for everything so with that being said let's get into it and dive into the first sale all right so as stuff kind of sold i wrote down everything on this list to keep track of it and we're going to plug it in here so the very first one was a super nintendo that sold and it was a Super Nintendo with Super Mario World and two controllers for 105 on the Facebook Marketplace. And this will be where I'll put my first tip out there. You know, if you have complete inbox consoles, or not inbox, but complete consoles with cords and controllers and possibly a game, uh, I would try to do that on Facebook Marketplace. It's a lot easier. You don't have to plug all the details and stuff in that you would on eBay, and it can be a headache to try to ship and package consoles. You could get more, demand more money on eBay if you want for sure. But for me, it, it's really not about getting as much money back as I can. For people who try to do this for a living, who flip and resell games, I can understand that. But that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to grow my collection for as cheap as possible. So the Super Nintendos and Nintendo 64s, you should list those on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, even if you want to ask for top dollar, you can go ahead. I don't necessarily try to do that, especially if you're a friend of mine or someone on YouTube. I try to give people really good deals on things, but uh, those sell really quickly on the Marketplace. So put stuff like that on Marketplace. You'll get it going quick. Next thing up was a Nintendo 64. Quick story on this one. I had the 64 listed with the expansion pack and controllers with for 80 bucks on the marketplace. Uh, gentleman wanted it so he can play Donkey Kong 64. When he got to my house, he told me he bought Donkey Kong 64 off of Amazon.com. Guess how much he paid for it, guys? I wait. 
$55 for a cart only Donkey Kong 64 on Amazon. So the way people can sell stuff on Amazon is crazy. That's like double the price of it. So I said, dude, get your money back. I will sell you mine for just 20 bucks and we'll call it an even 100. So I sold him my personal copy out the collection to save him some money off of that Amazon purchase. So I need to find Donkey Kong 64 again, but 100 bucks on that one. Now the Game Gear. This was eBay 4531, and this is what we're talking about, tip number two. Little stuff that's lesser known or a little bit more niche, especially in my area, because this is a small area I live in, uh, would not do well on the marketplace. So you're gonna have to probably list stuff like a Game Gear, a Turbo Graphics and stuff like that on eBay, just because there's not gonna be a lot of eyeballs kind of looking at that stuff on Facebook. So. And the other issue with this uh, Game Gear was it turned on and I was able to turn it on and see that it powered on, but I didn't have a game to actually test it. So when I listed that on eBay, make sure you put that stuff. Don't try to trick people because you'll just be giving people wanting a refund or leave you some bad feedback. So be honest on that stuff. So hopefully that ended up working out for whoever bought it and games actually play in it. So, but stuff like that, go up on eBay. Next up, Skyward Sword 889 is what we netted from a sale on that one, complete in box. Next on our list was a Sega Dreamcast lot here where we netted 12728. This was a Sega Dreamcast lot that had controller, memory card, all the cords, and a complete in box uh, crazy taxi. This was on eBay. I think I had it listed for $134.99. On eBay, I do kind of hit just under uh, what price would be selling for. If I'm trying to really make my money back quickly, I'll go lower. Uh, marketplace and stuff is where I really slash the deals off. I had the same lot listed on the marketplace for 100 bucks. No one was interested in it. At 100 bucks, that's a solid deal. So I could not believe like even something like the Dreamcast just does not move on the marketplace like a 64 or Super Nintendo. It's kind of crazy. So eBay 127.28. Beautiful Joe. This was a uh, case and manual only 790. Another Nintendo 64 lot 130 bucks off the marketplace. This was Nintendo 64 controllers expansion pack and Ocarina of Time. All right, next one was a Paper Mario. We got 45.48 for a disc only copy on Facebook or on eBay. Then we had another Dreamcast here. Another interesting story here. I had this listed for the console only for 70 bucks on the marketplace. And I forget what the listing price was on eBay, but as you can tell, it sold on eBay and we netted $96.70. First new contacted me on Facebook really wanted it because of the price that I had it at and he said he wouldn't have been able to pay for it until March the 14th, which I was cool with. I was like, okay, I'll take it off and I'll hold on to it for you and just get in contact with me on the 14th. Well, I forgot I had it on Facebook and this happened and it messed me over on the next sale too, but I forgot that I had it on uh, eBay and ended up selling. So this guy, when he contacts me on the 14th, uh, luckily I do have one more extra Dreamcast, but it's just the console only. I'm just gonna give that to him for free, guys. So if he contacts me, I'm gonna give him the console and just say, hey, you're gonna have to find the cords and stuff somewhere else, but here's at least the console, just cause I feel bad, cause I was gonna hold on to it for him to give him a deal. So at least he'll get the console for free. He can just have pay about 30, 35 bucks to get a controller and cords for it so on to the next one all right and this was a painful one guys because as you can see here we're already up to 666 bucks uh in the account i still had a lot of consoles i was going to be able to sell uh with avoiding having to get rid of this next one which is the second nomad that was like the next console on my list that i really wanted to keep especially after playing it here and testing it out that thing was awesome uh, unfortunately, once again, it was like one of the first things I listed on eBay because I thought for sure I was going to have to get rid of it. And uh, sure enough, 
it sold without me remembering that it was on there because I keep forgetting that when I put listings online and once it sold uh, seeing where my budget was at with over getting so far and my heart sank because I was like man I could have kept this thing possibly and but now it's gone 235 14 the nomads gone what are the, the odds that I ever find one again for the price I would have been able to get it at from this lot will probably be next to none but I enjoyed the time I had with it so hopefully the person who has it now is going to enjoy it. it didn't have a battery pack on it but it did come with a power cord but I'm gonna regret that one guys especially when you see what our end total is gonna be all right next up was Neo Geo CD and this was to a fellow YouTube buddy uh, Emperor Fox here online. I've, I've done deals with them in the past already with some of these lots that I get. And again, guys, if you know me on YouTube, if we before friends on YouTube, hit me up if there's something you need because I'll try to hook you up with a great deal for it. And yeah, so hopefully it all works out for Fox and he needs to find a controller and stuff for it. But he's going to the Midwest uh, Gaming Classic. I'm sure he'll be able to find one there and he can start enjoying some Neo Geo CD goodness. I had no attachment to Neo Geo CD stuff, Neo, the pocket that I had, uh, 3DO, I could have cared less about those consoles, just no attachment, so I knew I was going to get rid of those things. All right, next up is another Super Nintendo for $65.24 on eBay. This was just the console and a controller only online. So another tip. If you're just going to have like a console only or something like that, another thing that's hard to move on the marketplace, even you list it for real cheap, if it doesn't have the cords or stuff with it, people generally aren't interested in your item. All right, so the next thing on the list you can see here, I have one up. So what is one up? The one up app is an app that Phoenix resale, uh, Caleb uh, designed and it's order for, so it was supposed to be like a collection app, almost like a game eye, but it also incorporates his buy list program in there. If you're not familiar with that, uh, Caleb would do a program where the big resellers and stuff who have all this extra inventory or want to make uh, good money on some stuff he pays a premium for certain games and items uh, because he puts them on Amazon so he can pay you pretty close to what you'd get on eBay and sometimes even over the price charting values on games just because of what they sell on Amazon the only catch is with the submission is you have to have at least three hundred dollars worth of stuff to send him and it's got to be in really good condition uh, to be able to get through the submission process on it. I used his buy list once, man, I think it was like last October. No, it's been a while. I used it one time because I had some extra stuff sitting around here and I had $300 worth. It's like, let me give it a try. And it worked smooth and it was great. Uh, so for this one, I had it kept in mind. If I had some stuff that uh, I could send, I could send it to him through his app. Now the app is something, I'll go ahead and go to the screen to show you guys this part and I'll, you can see me here. I'll move my head out the way when we get to the list. You have to hit, like I said, that $300 mark, but normally for this program, his quick flips program, you have to pay 30 bucks a month. Well, since I was a previous buy list person, I did that one submission, I was able to get a couple months for free. So I did not have to pay for this to do it, in the but in the future, if I want to do it once this runs out, I'd have to pay for that to submit games. This isn't for someone like me personally, if because uh, I'm just a collector who tries to grow cheap. I'm out of business trying to make money through reselling. I could see this being something like they would want to use to make a lot of money quick and fast if they're flipping games all the time. But personally, it's not something I would pay for in the future just because I might have something to send once every six months. But since I had some free stuff, I'll go ahead and show you guys the list of stuff that I did. As you can see here, the estimated value was 360, but we got $365 from it. I left a note in it because last time when I submitted it, he sent a note back about some condition things and how they want things in the future, but they let it slide for that time. I think I might have left stickers on some cases and stuff. So I sent a note apologizing uh, that I was going to try to do better. It was my second submission. So if there was any issues, he can do deductions. But luckily with this submission, uh, it was great, except for uh, one thing, the Guitar Hero Metallica disc I sent him, I guess might have had a couple too many scratches. But other than that, I still got full boat for everything. So what did I send? 
Now again, I sent 365, 360 bucks worth of stuff, but not all of it was from the collection buyout. So I'm only taking the proceeds from this to add in a chart that were from the stuff that I bought off the collection, which was still a good chunk. That being the Super Nintendo controllers, Resident Evil 4, this Rumble Pack, uh, the Super Smash Bros, Def Jam, Fire for New York being the big one, and Glacier uh, Game Boy Advance system. And this one being the big one is what the main target was for probably sending this in. Uh, I had 150 bucks right off the bat, so it's like, well, what can I do to make up to get to that 300 mark? And that's what was like, all right, going through the list and seeing what I can put in. So really quick way to get a good chunk of money back. Again, this one of those things like that's a great price to get for. That's almost full boat for a Def Jam fight for New York. Uh, if it was someone on here on YouTube who needed that, though, I would have gave it to you for 100 bucks or probably cheaper. So again, guys, if you need something that I got, don't be afraid to contact me. Shoot me a message because I'll I will try to hook you up. So let's get back to the spread list and put the numbers in. All right, so our official take home from that was 294 bucks. Bam, putting us at $1,390. We are right there, guys. We are on the cusp of breaking over. So after that was a Super Nintendo. This was a console only that had some yellowing to it. That was 4301 on eBay. After that, we had a Wii U sell for 92 85 and as you can see with that we put it at the $1,500 budget we went over it we made the money back guys the budget fully funded and we still got some stuff to go so as you can see I was able to be able to keep all the stuff that I wanted and we're gonna make some money here so things are working out great next up was a really big purchase from our boy ducky do gaming man i hadn't spoke to ducky in a while but he had reached out on the last youtube video i did with the collection uh saying he was interested in some stuff that i had so contacted him on discord and it'd been so long since so i talked to ducky man i forgot i was already discord friends with him and i feel bad because i lose touch and get out of touch with people all the time i take the full blame of that I had great times with Ducky back in the day with AGP podcast and man playing through aliens colonial marines is still one of my favorite memories of all time with him chance doom waves SNES mapper it was just a blast so and other games we got to play together so Ducky's a great guy and he reached out and he wanted to get some stuff out of the collection it was great being able to talk to him and stuff again and hopefully we'll be playing some games and stuff again in the future Ducky's just awesome so he bought almost $450 worth of stuff for me, guys. Uh, I actually I misjudged him or misquoted him on some shipping because he was paying for shipping too and everything. Uh, and I had to pay over on some items basically because of my screw ups. I forget to put stuff in the boxes and had to reship other things, etc. And we netted about $437 from all that. So $437 to Ducky. Well, what did Ducky get? Honestly, he got so much stuff, I kind of forget now. Now, the working items that he got was the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and he got the 3DO complete with controllers and cords and everything, and two complete in box games, uh, Road Rash and Shockwave 2. He also bought a bunch of systems that need a little bit of work and tinkering. He's great at tinkering with consoles and likes to get them working and stuff again and modding them and i'm probably gonna forget stuff but i believe one was a nintendo 64 that wouldn't power on a dreamcast that would power on but sometimes would cut back off and reset on its own a playstation 2 slim that works it just doesn't read disc all the time a playstation 2 fat console that works fine but the door gets jammed on it a playstation slim which i believe had issues powering on and there might have been something else. I, I don't know. It was a lot of stuff, but $437. He paid $450, but as far as netting is what I got was $437 for all that stuff. So huge purchase by Ducky, really putting us way above the bar. All right, next up was who we're gonna call the secret buyer. Uh, you know, I still had a lot of leftover stuff uh, here. Bunch of NES consoles and stuff I didn't need. Master Systems, great PlayStations. I already have multiple in my collection. They were the main things I wanted to get rid of, but the problem was they were lacking cords and power cables and stuff. 
but I found a secret buyer who also does the same thing that uh, kind of Phoenix Resale does with his one up app. He has a buy list of stuff he'll buy and everything I had that I wanted to get rid of, he was offering more than fair enough prices for me to go ahead and ship it out and get rid of it. And from all that stuff, it was NES complete console, which I think if you had a complete console, 70 bucks, that's what I would have had it listed up on Marketplace anyway. So exactly what I would have wanted for it. Uh, 70 bucks there, console only NES. Then we had two master systems, no cords, one with a controller. Three great PlayStations, uh, all had a cord or a controller and a power cable, but no AV cable. Two connect sensors and maybe something else. Anyway, he offered 342 for it and after paypal goods and services we got 331.77 putting our grand total at two thousand two hundred ninety five dollars and fifty seven cents well beyond the goal i was trying to hit i was trying to get close to 1500 and we blew past it some of these people with their buy list programs really come in clutch for this stuff guys so if you know anyone like that that's like some of the easiest way to go, especially with that secret buyer. That stuff was going to be tough for me to try to move. I was probably going to be sitting on it for a while or have to buy cords and stuff. But this guy gave fair prices. And it's like a, the circle, man. Like I bought my stuff at a good deal and now I'm hooking him up. He's getting stuff at a good deal where he's going to even make money on it. It's like comes around full circle. So all in all, massive success. And we got to make money on top of keeping everything I wanted to keep. So we got to keep our complete with all the cords. PlayStation with the LCD screen, isn't it cute? We got to keep one that means a lot to me personally and that is the Sega Saturn. Feels so horrible for getting rid of my uncles he gave me back in the day, but we got another one now that's complete with all the cords. So excited to have this. And this came complete as well. It's just easier to hold without the stand on it. But the Virtual Boy, it's staying. It's part of the collection with Tetris 3D. Big time game for it too. So super stoked to keep this. And last but not least, the king of the lot in my opinion. The TurboGrafx-16 with the CD attachment on it. And this is one that yeah, I even have another TurboGrafx-16 in there. A uh, spare that came with a lot that I'm keeping. So... Never in my life thought I would have one of these, especially getting paid to keep it. So incredible. This also has everything with it, except it didn't have a power cord, but I already ordered one of those and it's already here. So awesome, awesome that I get to keep this in the collection as well. So I got to keep all those in every game that I wanted for a collection and I got paid to do it. And there's even more stuff still. I still even got more stuff that I don't want. I need to get rid of. So. All in all, it was a success. Way more than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to be honest. When I opened up that stuff and a lot of the cords and stuff were missing, I thought for sure uh, something like the Virtual Boy was going to have to go. Uh, but as you can see, we cleared the bar by a long shot. And now you can see why having that Sega Nomad go hurt so much. Uh, I really wish I had remembered to take that off because I would have much rather traded at 235 back so i could have kept that in the collection but that's how it goes sometimes maybe we'll get lucky again down the future and it'll come across our way again but for now super happy to add what i added to my collection and yeah we keep rolling from here guys next video coming up is another pretty cool one so stay tuned and yeah hope you guys enjoyed it might have learned a thing or two on this journey of this massive collection and i'll see you in the next one